Hello crafters and welcome to the DM's Craft. I'm DM Scotty, good to have you with me. Today we're going to do a terrain feature uh, that is a slime pool. And um, it's very similar to the water type effects that I've done. But it's, I'm going to have some bubbles, some bubbling on the pool, which is kind of interesting. And I'm also going to add another feature, um, some kind of broken up floor pieces that are actually in uh, the slime pool. So this, is, uh, so this is kind of a modification of the water technique. Uh, but let's go to the table and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Here's a tile from uh, AJ's Dungeon. I've done it in the Onx uh, Black or the Basalt Black um, texture paint. And what, we, what he wanted to have was like this kind of a slime pool that was across that spanned the room. But I thought it might be interesting to add a little extra element to that. And what I've done is I've taken a thin piece of cardboard, and you can see it's very thin, um, and I've sprayed it with the black uh, texture paint. And then what I did is I just cut it up. So here's the pieces that I've cut up. And you can see I just cut up some random pieces. So I'm going to apply these to the tile, and then you'll see um, how I'm going to work this into the slime pool. So what I'll do is I'll grab my tile. And then I've got my trusty glue gun, and I'll just start applying these pieces. So they kind of blend in there. So what I'll do is I will finish applying these pieces, and then I'll give you a look at it. So these uh, pieces are kind of hard to see. Uh, I'll pull it up a little bit, maybe you can see it a little better there. So you can see this piece is there. Now what I'll do when I finish this is I will rim them with this kind of uh, bluish gray so it gives them uh, a little more definition. But they'll really pop out once I get the slime pool on. So I'm going to use my uh, large glue gun and then I'm going to start giving the slime pool some definition. And just kind of work your way around. I just kind of rim those pieces. And remember when you do this kind of glue gun stuff, um, as other people have noted, um, you might get some little wispies, which are just the glue gun strands. And um, just pull those off. Just, just, just knock those off if you need to. Um, you can usually rub them off. And uh, it's pretty easy to take care of those. But see, that's given some interest there with just the, some texture going around those pieces. That's all there is to it. With some of the open areas, I want to do a little interesting technique where um, I do kind of like a bubbling. So what I'll do is I'll kind of do a blop in the center in the, in where I want it and then kind of pull it out as like a circular motion and then put a blob in the center, a blob in the center. And that'll look like a bloop kind of bubble that's coming up from the slime. And so you can add, you can add more of those. Um, so just do a circular pattern like that with the glue gun. And when you get done, put a big blob in the center. And you can make different sizes and that kind of thing. So if you find your blob is kind of going down too much, you can always, uh, after that dries, you can always add another um, another one. Now I'll make a smaller one here. In here. So yeah, if your blop kind of blends in too much, wait for it to dry and then just add a little bit, add another blop in the center and it'll, it'll kind of highlight it. So um, now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to texture the rest of this uh, going around these um, bubbles and uh, then I'll add one more detail and we'll talk about that. Okay, I've got it finished, and uh, i got all my little bloops on there, and it all filled in. Now, you notice that when I fill it in, I don't totally fill it in. It looks quite filled in, more so than I usually do with water, because uh, I'm getting, trying to get a rougher texture, but I usually don't fill it in this much for water, um, and even this isn't all the way filled in. So, 
Um, you don't have to fill everything, every single little inch of this in. Uh, some board can show through because you just paint through it. Now what I want to do, I'm going to flip it so it'll be a little easier for me to work with. And I want to kind of have um, the nature of this crypt. I want to kind of have some almost like tendrils coming off of the slime itself. Um, so what I'll do is I will uh, start doing that. And I'm just going to free, free wheel this. I'm not going to draw or anything like that. So I can kind of pull it. And if you pull it, you'll give it some kind of weird textury. It'll look, it'll fit in with the rest of the slime. So it's almost like tendrils of slime coming off this. All right, so there we go. It's kind of hard to see, like I say, without the paint on it, but once we paint it up, it'll look really great. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll start painting this up and uh, uh, that'll be our next segment. So guys, I've already got my uh, blue-gray on my palette. And I'm going to start picking out some of these chunks that I've got that are uh, kind of floating or, and, you know, this, this morass of goo is moving around. So um, I've got a small chisel edge brush and I'm just going to kind of go around the edges. Now I'm getting some on the uh, slime, but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to repaint, I'm going to repaint the slime. So that's why I'm doing these first. I don't have to be that careful about getting on the edge of these uh, pieces. Um, that way it'll, it'll make it easier when I do the slime. So kind of nice to think about when you're doing projects to think about the order of the projects because sometimes an order can make it harder or easier to do. Sometimes you really don't have much choice about the order but like times like this you do. So you know take advantage of it um, and you can get all you can get as messy as you want. So now I'm, uh, let me give you a little close up there. So now I'm going to um, paint the rest of these pieces and uh, then we'll come back and we'll start painting the uh, slime pool. For the slime pool itself, I'm gonna use a hunter green. So I'm gonna grab my fairly big brush, but it's still like a chisel brush. And I'll just start applying that. If you feel that uh, you need to get into some of the spaces um, that um, it's too, the brush is too wide, you can always switch to a smaller brush. And some of these tendrils, I'm going to do that too. So I'm just going to kind of not you know, try to get the whole thing. I'm just going to get a general coverage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is while um, I'm going to do a little bit more of this with a thinner brush while this is wet. That way um, I can add some of the other colors because you get a nice blend if it's still wet. And it doesn't take long for acrylic paint to dry up. So if you put it on a little wet, it'll stay a little longer. Just add a touch of water. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some other colors to this. I have a um, a spring green and a uh, lemon lime green. 
which uh, look, we'll think it will look pretty nice in this. The lemon lime green will be the extreme highlight and then the, uh, the uh, spring green will be kind of a mid. So I'll just kind of grab that. This is the spring green. And see, it's kind of blended in with the, here's a bubble I did. So you're getting kind of a natural blend right there while it's wet. I'm putting quite a bit of the other paint on the brush so I can get that blend. Because if you don't, it'll just kind of get drowned out by the other color, the hunter green. All right, that's looking pretty slimy, but now I want to add a little bit, uh, make it a little more radioactive green, so I'm going to add that really bright lemon lime. And I'm not adding too much. There's my little bubble. And remember, this will tone down a bit. There's another bubble there. As the paint dries, it'll mellow a bit. That really look, looking like a toxic miasma of slime. Like I say, a light hand is better than a heavy hand on this. You can always add more. All right, that is looking suitably gross. So now we'll do the, I'll do the other half and then we'll let that dry and I'll move on to the next step. So my uh, slime pool is dried. But now for the final touch, you know, we want to add, we want to make it very glossy. So I'm going to use my, um, I, this is a separate jar that I've uh, put some uh, water-based gloss in. And you just get this at the hardware store uh, or any, almost any big box store really. It's just, all it is, is just um, gloss that you can put on uh, furniture and that kind of thing. And it's just water-based. So the cool thing about that is you can wash your brushes off with water so you don't ruin your brushes. So um, what we'll do is we'll uh, fill this in with the uh, water base gloss. And uh, usually, uh, usually it takes about two coats uh, to get something super glossy. That's about what I use on water and that kind of thing. So we'll put, the, we'll put a couple coats on here and then we'll come back and look at this uh, with a figure. Here we go, here's our finished uh, room, and we have a miniature on there for scale, so you can see the poor little guy here. Now, I love this kind of stuff because it's like, um, the players don't know what to make of it. It's like, is this just a barrier that they have to get by? Um, it's obviously something not natural, so is it just some kind of, the uh, obstacle they have to get by or is it actually something living or is it is there something hiding in it or how deep is it is it magical you know there's all these questions um, that can arise and it seems you know fairly easy you know that the player could hop these uh, you know areas and get over here but you know hey it may not be that easy you know the, they may sink or um, they may uh, tip you know, and slide in, or they, they could be floating and not solid on the surface. So, um, you know, depending on how you want to play it, uh, these things can be really interesting. But um, what I'm going to do here real quick is take the figure off, and I'll give you a better look at the, uh, 
tile itself with the so you can see that really see that detail and see the see the bloop, the bubble coming up and I got another one here so yeah that really looks cool and adds uh, something to the to the uh, the pool itself as opposed to just a, a straight pool it, it looks like it's gurgling and bubbling and that kind of thing and you can describe to the players as it's kind of amorphous like it seems to move a bit it doesn't seem to be totally defined um, the edges move a bit so um, I love these kind of obstacles and uh, really looks creepy and icky and slimy which is was the whole point of this exercise so I'll see you next time on the DM's craft for some more uh, craft and fun hey crafters I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the DM's craft uh, make sure to subscribe, and I have tons of other videos, as you can see. I am the originator of the 2.5D method of crafting tiles. I also do dirt cheap terrain for the table. If all this intrigues you, make sure you check out all the videos below. Also, uh, join my forum. We have lots of great crafters on there who give uh, advice. I have a link above and below. And last but not least, remember, go forth and craft!